Hello, and welcome to Cisco Catalyst TV on YouTube. My name is David Roten. I'm a technical marketing engineer based in Research Triangle Park, North Carolina. I am excited to spend the next few minutes with you to introduce the latest addition to the Catalyst 8500 series, the new Catalyst 8500 20X 6C Edge platform. Network architects are building software-defined networks that can deliver applications securely at scale. The new C8500 20X 6C platform is built to enable this while offering performance and power efficiency in a smaller form factor than ever before. The C8500 20X 6C platform can seamlessly integrate into your existing SD-WAN networks to provide additional capacity and reduce the need for horizontal scaling. Additionally, the C8500 20X 6C platform can be deployed in non-SD-WAN environments to provide all the enterprise services that you have seen in our previous ASR1000 routers. The C8500 20X 6C platform is ideally suited for co-location as a multi-cloud gateway, multi-tenant edge router, SD-WAN border router in a multi-region fabric, or SD-WAN aggregation router. Let's now take a tour of the new C8500 20X 6C platform. Here we are looking at the front side of the chassis. You can see that this is a 3RU chassis, which is half the size of an ASR1000 6X chassis or one third the size of an ASR1000 9X that were previously required for high density 100 gigabit ethernet. To get right to the heart of the matter, you can see that there are 20 1 10 gigabit SFP plus bays in bay one. In addition to this, there are six 100 40 gig QSFP 28 interfaces in bay zero. All of these interfaces are enabled at all times in a non-blocking configuration without the need for any port licenses. This means that there are no bottlenecks between the interfaces and the data plane engines in the platform. The 1 slash 10 gig interfaces are all SFP plus based and can be independently configured for 1 gig or 10 gig operation depending on if a SFP or SFP plus optics is installed. The QSFP28 interfaces can operate in either 100 gig or 40 gig mode. There is no dependency between the interfaces for choosing to use 40 or 100 gig. The interface speeds depend only on the type of QSFP optics that are installed into the physical interface. The QSFP interfaces on the C8500 20X 6C router do not support a 4x10 breakout as is supported on the C8500 12X 4QC platform. All 26 of these interfaces support line rate MACSEC as well as synchronous Ethernet. There is no performance penalty associated with enabling MACSEC on any number of the interfaces. It is possible to install up to four power supplies into the chassis. Two are required and are included by default. Up to two more can be added for 2 plus 1 or 2 plus 2 redundancy. There are options for AC, DC, and plans for a high voltage DC power supply as well. Mixing these power supply types is not supported. You will notice that there is a blank panel in the lower right hand corner. While this does look like there is room for expansion, the C8500 20X 6C is a fixed configuration platform. This blank cover protects the router's internal hardware and helps ma manage airflow inside the chassis. This blank panel is not removable. In addition to the networking interfaces, the front side of the C8500 20X 6C also has the standard set of management connectivity options. This includes an RJ45 and micro USB based console port. Only one of these console connections can be active at a time. Two USB-A 3.0 interfaces are present to transfer configurations, software, logs, packet traces, and other files. There is also a management Ethernet connection which can function independent of the router's data plane. There is also an option to include a passive RFID tag for easy inventory management. Now looking at the back of the chassis, we can see that there are three fan trays. Each of these are field replaceable with no downtime. All three fans are included and used by default. If one of these fans fails, the chassis will continue to operate without interruption while raising an alarm to indicate the need to replace the failed fan. Airflow through the chassis is front to back, meaning that cool air is pulled in through the end of the chassis with the interfaces and power supplies. The air is pulled through the chassis and the exhaust is expelled from this side of the chassis. Overall, the chassis is approximately 80 pounds or 36.5 kilograms in weight. 
Because of this, it is standard that a four post rack mount is used to secure the C8520X6C. The chassis is three rack units tall and just under 27 inches or 69 centimeters in length and the standard width for a 19 inch rack. There is an option to include a NEBS compliant air filter to the router if necessary. The air filter can be optionally added as part of the ordering process. We've gone over all the aspects of the chassis that you can observe from the outside. Now let's go over the internals that are not readily observable. Just like our previous ASR1000 routers, the Catalyst 8500 routers use the third generation of the Cisco QFP or Quantum Flow Processor ASIC for the data plane. There's not just one of these ASICs in the 8500-20X6C, however. We have a total of four that power the data plane. The QFP ASICs were designed so that they can work standalone or in a matrix of two or four chips to extend data plane capacity. A single QFP 3.0 ASIC has 224 cores, and each of those cores is quad-threaded. So when we do the math, C8520X6C comes to the plate with 896 cores and 3,584 threads for handling network traffic. This means that we can have more than 3,500 packets in flight simultaneously in the data plane for massive parallel processing. Using this well-evolved architecture accelerates feature velocity and provides backwards compatibility for existing platforms and existing features. To assist the QFP ASIC in having the maximum throughput possible, there are a number of hardware assists around the QFP ASIC. Two mirrored 160 megabit TCAMs are included in every C8520X6C. These are used for very high speed complex pattern matching. This assists the QFP in the processing of access control lists for QoS, firewalling, NAT, and other features. This hardware-based data plane results in Ceph forwarding north of 500 gigabits per second for iMix traffic. The QFP 3.0 ASIC also integrates some functions that were external for previous QFP 2.0 based hardware. Each QFP 3.0 ASIC includes 16 built-in crypto engines. By having the Suite B compatible crypto engines built in, we have optimized IPsec processing. The end result is that we have IPsec performance well above 100 gigabits per second for SD-WAN and non-SD-WAN deployments. The control plane of the platform is based on an 8-core x86 architecture. This control plane processor has its own dedicated 64 gigabytes of memory, which is standard. The x86 ASIC provides QAT assistance to expedite negotiation of IPsec and MaxSec sessions. 32 gigabytes of boot flash and a 480 gigabyte SSD drive are included by default. The boot flash is typically used to locally store boot images. The SSD drive can be used as storage for applications running on cores made available from the x86 ASIC used for the control plane. Running Thousand Eyes in the services plane would be an example of this. The net result here is that, is that the C8520X6C platform is the fastest enterprise routing platform to date delivering 500 plus gigabits per second of Ceph forwarding and more than 100 gigabits per second of IPsec forwarding with iMix traffic. As is the case with all other Catalyst 8000 series platforms, the C8520X6C includes the necessary hardware and software to support trustworthy solutions. Trustworthy Solutions uses a built-in Trust Anchor Module, or TAM chip, to assist in authenticating the microloader, bootloader, and iOS XE software for authenticity. Modifications to the software by a malicious actor during boot time or runtime can be detected. Not only is software verified, but any installed licenses can be authenticated with an assist from the TAM chip as well. You can see here a high-level block diagram of the C8520X6C. In gray on the left, you can see the control plane processor which runs iOS D and all of the management processes in the platform. It has 64 gigabytes of dedicated DD4 memory by default. Next to that, you can see four QFP 3.0 ASICs. Each of them has dedicated RAM, crypto engines, and packet buffer memory. There are two 160 megabit TCAM banks that are kept in sync. Two of the QFP ASICs share access to each of the TCAMs. Two of these are used to avoid contention from all the QFPs accessing a single TCAM. This helps to maintain high-speed forwarding. There is a high-speed interconnect between all of the QFP ASICs. These interconnects allow the ASICs to exchange information about packet flows as the load-based distribution may send packets for a given flow to threads across multiple ASICs. 
You will also see that there is an integrated L2 complex that enables line rate MACSAC. This functionality is completely separate from the data plane processing done by the QFP ASICs, so there is no performance penalty for enabling MACSAC. Each of the QFPs has dual 120 gigabit per second connectivity to the physical interfaces on the front of the router. This enables non-blocking direct access from physical interfaces into the QFP complex, eliminating any potential performance bottlenecks. So what does this mean for what the C8520X6C can enable for you and your enterprise network? First off, it is impossible to emphasize enough that the Catalyst 8500 series Edge platforms inherit all the feature richness of the ASR1000 platforms for non-SD-WAN and SD-WAN use cases. Fundamental functions like Internet Gateway and DCI moving through to innovative cloud gateway and co-location deployment scenarios are fully supported. Modern network infrastructure such as MPLS, EVPN, and segment routing are supported as well. We see the WAN evolving to a service exchange instead of the traditional models we've seen in the past. Platforms such as the C8520X6C are well positioned to support these deployments. With its small footprint and high density high speed interfaces, the platform can adeptly maintain the necessary security and throughput necessary when connecting enterprise networks to a variety of cloud services available in today's enterprise workflows and co-location facilities. In SD-WAN deployments, the higher IPsec throughput and higher interface density gives additional flexibility and reduces the amount of horizontal scaling necessary for larger networks with thousands of remote locations. There are multiple ways to manage a horizontally scaled SD-WAN aggregation network, including branch and tunnel affinity. The C8520X6C will reduce the need for horizontal scaling. Cisco SD-WAN now supports multi-region fabrics. The C8520X6C router is well positioned for the role of inter-regional hub. It has the necessary bandwidth and interface diversity while being able to fully support the necessary IPsec requirements for secure connectivity. When this diverse connectivity is enabled in a co-location facility where space is at a premium, the 3RU size is a key advantage. With the latest support for multi-tenancy SD-WAN, C8500-20X6C is well positioned to consolidate a large number of customers into a single platform. Catalyst SD-WAN will manage all the internals necessary for isolating the various tenants network traffic as it passes through a single SD-WAN edge routing device, thus simplifying the network topology. Using the C8500-20X6C platform with multi-tenancy can significantly reduce the physical footprint required to service multiple customers. Many individual routers can be consolidated into a single hardware device to optimize real estate, power usage, and cooling. Thank you for spending the time today to go through this tour of the Catalyst 8500-20X6C routing platform. The key takeaways that I would like to keep with you are the following. The Catalyst 8500-20X6C provides all the enterprise routing features of the ASR1000 platforms brought forward for SD-WAN and non-SD-WAN networking. The platform provides 500 plus gigabits per second of Ceph forwarding, 100 gigabits plus per second of IPsec forwarding for SD-WAN and non-SD-WAN networks, and it provides efficient use of rack space real estate with high density 100, 40, 10, and 1 gigabit per second Ethernet connectivity. I hope this session has been informative and useful in your consideration of the platform in your enterprise networking solution. Have a good day.